Okay, so smooth muscle. So we have, remember we have cardiac muscle, we have skeletal muscle, and we also have smooth muscle. So for cardiac muscle, we learned about that last time. Remember we have the intercalated disc, smooth muscle, or, or sorry, skeletal muscle. We know it has multiple nuclei. Let's learn about smooth muscle now. So where do you find smooth muscle? You can find it in the integumentary system with the erector pili muscles. And they can move the hairs, make them stand up. You can also find smooth muscle in the cardiovascular and the respiratory systems. And it helps regulate airflow okay, in the respiratory system and blood pressure in the cardiovascular system. In the digestive and urinary systems, smooth muscle forms sphincters. And they can control whether food or other materials move from one part of the body to the next. And they can also, digestive system, you'll also have smooth muscle that helps move materials through your body and out of your body. All right, but most of these systems you will cover in A and B2. In the reproductive system, you're moving the gametes. Remember, these are the uh, essentially the sex cells. Uh, also helps to uh, expel the fetus from the body during uh, labor okay, with those urine contractions. Okay, so what are some structural characteristics of smooth muscles? So remember, we think about things in terms of structure and function, right? So for structure, the cells are long and slender and they're shaped like a, sp a spindle, okay? Which basically means that they're pointy on the ends. And they have one nucleus in the central, uh, central area of the cell, in the middle of the cell. They have no T-tubules, no transverse tubules, no myofibrils, and no sarcomeres, okay? And there are no striations, okay? So no sarcomeres, no striations, all right? But you do have thick filaments, and they are scattered around the smooth muscle. They have many mice and heads on them. The thin filaments are attached to what we call dense bodies. And their role is to connect cells that are next to each other. And it helps transmit a contraction, so you get a coordinated contraction through the smooth muscle cell, or smooth muscle tissue. And smooth muscle, you don't see any aponeuroses, which are connective tissue sheets, or tendons that connect muscle to bone, all right? Because again, most smooth muscle is not gonna be any, it's not gonna connect to a bone, so no need for tendons. All right, so here's a picture of smooth muscle. Okay, this layer is more circular, okay? So it's, and it's really about how it's cut, okay? Whereas this is longitudinal, so it's easy to see the spindle shape. So they're, they're long and thin and pointed on the ends. Okay, one central nucleus. Okay, when this, when the smooth muscle is relaxed, you have, you can see the dense bodies, okay, actin and myosin, they're all kind of spread out. Okay, and this isn't a sectional view, but in a more superficial where you're seeing this is the surface of the cell. You see these intermediate filaments, whereas the, the axon and the myosin are more inside the smooth muscle cell. All right. And so these dense bodies connected by these intermediate filaments helps transmit the contraction. Okay, so you get a smooth contraction. So when you do that, you're basically squeezing that smooth muscle cell. Okay, so it's kind of forms these little bulges but you don't have any striations. All right, so that's structure. Let's talk about function. So smooth muscle is different from other muscle tissue, okay, in terms of its ex excitation contraction coupling. Remember we talked about that, I believe in video number one for muscle tissue and its length tension relationship. Okay, we talked about that as well. So if you don't remember, make sure to go back to that video, how the contractions are controlled as well as muscle tone and smooth muscle. 
So let's talk first about the excitation contraction coupling. So in skeletal muscle, that calcium is inside of the terminal cisternic, right? And it gets released you know, when there is an action potential. Now in smooth muscle, there are there are basically no myofibrils, so you don't have the T tubules and, and you know no no triads. So calcium is going to be free in the cytoplasm, and that's what's going to trigger your contraction. Your calcium ions are going to bind with a chemical called calmodulin, and that calmodulin's role is to activate an enzyme that we call myosin light chain kinase. And kinases typically do something with a phosphate group, okay? And because it's, it has the name myosin light chain kinase, it has to do with myosin. What does it do? It helps the myosin heads attach to actin, okay? Which remember, that's how you get the cross bridging, which allows you to get to your, your um, contraction, okay? Now, in terms of the length and tension relationship, that was one of the other differences. Remember, there are no sarcomeres, so you don't have a relationship between length and tension, okay? Because there, there's no sarcomere to, to have a relationship. Now, in skeletal muscle, when the sarcomere is stretched out too much, you get no contraction. But with smooth muscle, because there's no sarcomere to begin with, and the structure is different, you can still have a contraction when the smooth muscle gets stretched out. And this is a property that we call plasticity, which means that the smooth muscle can function over a broad or wide range of different lengths. Okay. So it can be, muscle could be, or cell could be long or short, you're still gonna get a contraction. All right, so the next difference for smooth muscle tissue was control of contractions. So you have a couple of different types of smooth muscle cells, multi-unit and visceral. So for the multi-unit smooth muscle cells, they are in innervated, okay, they get stimulation in motor units. And each cell can actually be connected to a different or more than one motor neuron. So in skeletal muscle is typically each muscle fiber is part of a is part of one motor unit because they are only innervated by one motor neuron. But in smooth muscle, a motor, a skeletal muscle cell could be innervated by multiple neurons. In visceral smooth muscle, there are no connections to motor neurons. And those smooth muscle cells get arranged in layers, okay? All can be layers or you can call it a sheet. So how are they gonna have contraction if they don't have neurons? Well, they have cells that are called pace setter cells, okay? And they control contraction. Now your cardiac muscle cells, you may remember, have pacemaker cells to have their coordinated contraction. Smooth muscle cells have pace setter cells. Okay, let's talk a little bit about smooth muscle tone, the last difference. So remember, smooth muscle or, or muscle tone in general has to do with Basically, the activity or, or contraction level of your muscles at rest. Okay, so it's a no, even for smooth muscle, it's a normal background level of activity. But your smooth muscle tone can actually be decreased. You can reduce your sm smooth muscle tone. And that could be through chemical factors, it could be through hormones, it could be through neural stimulation. 
Okay, it can make you decrease your smooth muscle tone. All right, so what I'd like for you to do now at your tables, um, I'm going to get set up for the next chapter. And while we do that, I'd like for you to um, describe the structural and functional differences for smooth muscle compared to other muscle tissue. And you can do this at home as well. 